Hello, and welcome back to my 11th podcast episode. Hi, and welcome back to this podcast episode. Um, I can't believe we're already on episode 11. It's crazy that I've been doing this for, you know, at this point over a year, but 11 podcast episodes, crazy. So welcome back. You may notice that it's a slightly more sparse background than normal. Um, If you could see around me, it's (laughs) kind of a mess around me, and that is because I'm moving. So I'm moving just 20 minutes away, but um, I'll have an office and a cozy craft room again, um, combined spaces, and excited to set that up, bring you along for that. So you'll see a video on that soon. Um, And yeah, I think it's going to be great, but I feel a little disjointed today figuring everything out and my next like one or two videos might be slightly frazzled as I'm figuring all of this stuff out, but very exciting overall. So um, before we get too far into the normal podcast, I did want to say that I have decided to host a giveaway as a thank you for 2000 subscribers, just to say thank you to the people who've watched me. Um, I do really appreciate it. It's it's lovely um, to have like a little audience and a community. So thank you so much for being here. Um, This giveaway will be just of a sock set of yarn. Um, So I haven't purchased it yet because the pre-order opens tonight, the day I'm filming, but um, I'll have a picture up. I don't have it with me, of course. Um, But the sock set I'm planning on giving away is by Salty Blonde Fine Fibers. She's one of my favorite dyers. I've sampled it for her before. She's also based locally for me in Colorado. And the collection that she has right now is Colorado inspired. One of the colorways that I'm going to purchase for the sock set is called Enchanted and it is inspired, it's named after a trailhead in my hometown of Boulder, Colorado, and it's inspired by the way the flat irons look um, at sunset. So it's a beautiful colorway. I'll have the picture of the colorway as well as the inspo picture. Um, And she has a wonderful purple tonal that I'm blanking on the name of, but that will be included as well as like a little contrast 20 gram skein. That's the giveaway. I'm going to have it open internationally. The shipping is going to be expensive, but I'm I'm accepting that now. Um, So if you would like to enter that, you can just comment anything down below. I'd love it if it's something to start a conversation, say something nice or tell me what you're working on, but anything goes. Um, So do that comment and I will announce the giveaway winner on September 1st, my next podcast episode. So Sunday, September 1st, when that comes out, I will announce, I will not contact you directly. I will not put anything in the comments saying, hey, giveaway winner, don't interact with anyone that says they're me and that you want a giveaway. The only way that you will know that you won the giveaway is I will say it in the video. So I'll read the username and then I will ask you to contact me. So I have both my Instagram and my email. in my bio for YouTube. So please reach out to me on one of those and we will figure out the giveaway from there. Um, But yes, I know that sometimes these attract scams or bots. So please, please be safe. Don't interact with anyone that's not me in video form. Okay, that's the only way this is gonna work. So, and I will try to delete comments if I see anything scammy, but if you see something, if you don't mind sending me a screenshot on Instagram, or if there is a way to do that on YouTube or email me, I'd really appreciate it just as I manage this. But very excited and wanted to say thank you. And this collection coming out that's inspired by Colorado um, and colorways I love just felt perfect um, for a way to say, here's a little piece of me um, in your own home. So really excited for that. So, okay, let's get into the normal podcast now. Um, So, this might be a slightly underwhelming episode because out of the three finished objects I have, I have, well, I can show one. I, well, I can show two, but I have one with me. So, (laughs) let's get into it. The first finished object I have is a secret sample knit. Um, It's probably not even worth talking about or telling you about, but um, I did knit a pair of DK weight socks for Paisley Knits. and I'm really excited, they're beautiful, but that collection does not come out that I sampled it for until um, beyond the end of August. So I'm not gonna show it here, but just know I am working on other things. <laughs> I just felt the need to say, I don't have just two whip or two finished objects for this month, but regardless, that's the first thing. 
Um, the next finished object I have, I also don't have with me. It was another sample knit for Little Fiber Co. Um, that she's bringing it to Flock, actually, Flock Fiber Festival in um, uh, Seattle, Washington. I'm really excited that a little piece of me is going to be at that fiber festival. I've always wanted to go, um, but haven't been able to. Um, so it was a beautiful cable knit uh, tank top. The pattern was the Phoebe Top by Amy Sure Knits. Um, and I have a picture I can show a picture up. She's shown the colorway. So here's a picture of it. Um, it was really fun to work on. I made it in her silk base. I think it's called Silky Sock. Or it might have just been 100% silk. I'll have the exact details. But made it in her silk base. And um, it's a fingering weight. Wonderful, wonderful base um, in the colorway on the rocks. So that'll be at Flock. But I think she'll have it up afterwards on her website so if you really love the colorway keep an eye out for that um, but it was a wonderful experience it was a very short deadline to get it to her um, but I pulled it off and I'm really happy it's in her hands now or it's it's shipping still but it's on the way to her and it will be at flock so that's really cool um, so <laughs> the one finished object I can show you are these so these are the vervain socks by Sashiko Bergen um, the pattern is in the 52 weeks of socks book the volume one so i knit it from that and this was a really fun project um it took me like a month because i basically put these down once i was working on the phoebe top but they were my june socks i cast them on in july and finished them in august but they're supposed to be my sock a month june socks <laughs> um i'm falling off that a little bit after all the travel and then this month preparing for moving and doing a lot of sample knits but i'm hoping in august to get back on the sock a month schedule but these are the vervain socks i think they're stunning it has this really cool lace pattern um, that kind of looks like a leaf and they are um, opposites so i when i wear them it's both on the outside of my foot which i really like um, so they're really fun to make a, and I use the colorway Luminous Stems by the Yarn Addict in her fluffy fingering base. The Yarn Addict is now Little Fiber Co. Um, so colorway is no longer available, but very, very beautiful. I've had this in my stash for, gosh, two years. Or not two years, but at least a year. Um, and so I was really happy to actually work it up. I will say that this lace pattern was really hard to memorize i had to look at the lace chart the entire time um, so it wasn't the most relaxing whip because i had to have my phone out in front of me to follow along with the lace it just wasn't the most intuitive lace pattern but it made a really pretty effect so that's okay um, and it was kind of fun to engage my brain in that way of checking everything every time so i'm happy with them overall and yeah i really want to catch up with my <laughs> sock a month so hopefully in August I can make both my July and my August socks and then I'll be caught up um, but yeah those are the vervain socks highly recommend that pattern if you get your hands on the book so those are all of my finished objects um, slightly over underwhelming and the one whip I have this month right now is a secret sample knit also for paisley knits it's actually really cool I can't show you the colorways but I did two sample knits for her, or doing two sample knits for her, and they're the same colorways each, and but one of them has a variegated colorway for the Surrey, or the, you know, lace weight strand, and the same solid color, like a tonal color for the base, or fingering weight yarn, and then the other one has the variegated color for the fingering weight and then a tonal for the uh, lace weight Surrey. And so it's really cool seeing what that looks like um, and the difference between the two. I think that's such a good idea from Coley of Paisley Knits and it's really fun for me as a little experiment. So once I can show you the colorways, I'm really excited to do that um, and really excited for you all to see all the colors she has because I think it's, it's gonna be an amazing collection. Um, so that's my one whip. Um, I figured that since I can't show you the whip, I'd maybe talk through um, some of my next cast-ons because I'm getting really excited about them. So I have 
the yarn for the next cast ons I'm planning. So I think the first thing I'm going to cast on next because I'm just missing garments for myself is the Moonset Tea by Ozetta in this colorway. I've shown this before. This is by Salty Blonde Fine Fibers. It's the colorway Mojito and it's in her summer blend. So it is 50% alpaca, 25% linen, and 25% silk. And I have a top and a very similar yarn blend already that I love. So I'm really excited to add a t-shirt to my knit wardrobe in this wonderful colorway. It's a nice v-neck t-shirt. So I'm really excited to get started on that. I want to get started sooner than later. I mean, it stays hot in Colorado through mid-September at least. So I have some good time to wear it, but I do want to get started on it so that I can wear it. So that'll probably be my next cast on. I'm also just excited for a lot of stock in it in the round. I'm really honestly looking forward to the body of it. So um, we'll cast this on very soon, hopefully maybe middle of this week, depending on when I finish the sample knit, but I think middle of this week. Um, and then these are going to be my July socks. Um, so this is a sock set that one of my great friends got me for Christmas. It's from Treehouse Knits in the color Keepsake. Um, I love it. I've been debating what to do with it. I thought maybe I'd do color work with it, but I think that this is just too variegated. So I've decided I'm just going to make a really simple, basic German short row sock. So I have the Summer Lee basic sock or Summer Lee book of socks book, and I'm going to follow her recipe for a German short row sock. And I'm going to do contrast cuff, contrast heel, contrast toe. So I haven't decided which colors will be which yet. Um, I'm thinking maybe I'll do this on the cuff and toe and this on the heel maybe, or vice versa. Yeah, maybe this will be the cuff and toe and this will be the heel. I haven't really decided yet. We'll see how I feel <laughs> when it's time to cast on, but I'm going to use this sock set and I'm very excited about that um, as well. I don't know. I just, I'm craving simple knits right now. So I'm really excited for the big stockinette in the round project on a tank top and I'm excited on the for the little stockinette in the round project for the socks so that's kind of where my brain's been at clearly I'm a little overwhelmed right now with moving and the more complex knits I've worked on lately so those are my soon-to-be whips um so we can move on I'm gonna do inspirations first um so I will start with um this pair of socks. I don't know if I featured it before. I don't think so. But this is a pair of socks that I saw actually a really long time ago, but I'm still really inspired by from the Instagram account Crooked Pins. I just think they're stunning. So you can see that it's a pair of color work socks. Um, and so the pattern is the Field of Sunflower Socks by Stone Knits. Um, but this creator, Crooked Pins or Knitter, did them um, not like the traditional pattern where the sample for this sock set has like a blue background and then yellow flowers and it's the same yellow throughout and I love her like white yarn with little tiny speckles and then just fun rows of different colors I really really want to do something like that I think I might do that for my August socks because they're just they're so pretty and so fun and they just make me feel happy um so that's inspiring in itself just this specific pattern but I also think it's just a great inspiration source to see what maybe you own some color work patterns already and maybe see how you could tweak them um, based on you know what the sample looks like um, see how you can play with color within that and still you know use the same pattern but change up your color choices to make it really your own um, and unique I think that's really fun so I definitely want to do something fun with like a lot of different colors and color work. I'm not sure if I'll do the Field of Sunflowers pattern or look through my own colorway or color work sock library because I think I have a lot of patterns already. Um, but I just saw these and was thinking about them again. I was like, I really want to do something like that with using a lot of different colors. So I highly recommend checking out Crooked Pins. I think she has some other really cool patterns um, or projects, but really love this pair of socks. So that's my first inspiration. My second inspiration, slightly, slightly random. It's not directly related to knitting, but I've been watching um, Cozy K or Cozy with K a lot. Um, she, her name's Kennedy and she does YouTube videos. She's on Instagram, she's on TikTok, she's everywhere. She does short form videos, like short form videos, photos. 
and long form videos on YouTube. And I really love her. her. Her whole kind of brand is about being cozy. She started doing cozy games like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley and has kind of expanded into just cozy hobbies generally. And I've been obsessed with her as I'm getting ready to move and thinking about like what tweaks do I maybe want to make to my own space and kind of taking in some of her ideas about creating a cozy nook. She has this amazing barrel chair that I love um, and looks like just an amazing place to knit. And so um, I've just been really inspired to invest more time and a little bit more money into making my space feel cozy and exciting. And so it's the perfect time as I'm getting ready to move to like consider how do I want to make a nook for myself where I feel just cozy and can kind of walk out a lot of the world or not a lot of the world, but just relax and have this space for myself. So really considering that thanks to her and I highly recommend watching her. I'll have like a picture up or something, but I'll also have her channel linked below. Um, she just, she brings a good vibe. Um, she makes me really calm and happy. She doesn't knit or crochet. I think she crochets or she was learning to crochet and she does knit, but she doesn't really talk about knitting or crochet that much. She talks about other cozy hobbies. She colors a lot. Um, she paints sometimes, does like perler or fusy beads, um, plays video games, does cozy things, reads, just is open to any kind of chill hobby, which I love. So um, I recommend checking her out. So those are my inspirations. And I do have a few acquisitions um, that we'll go through quickly. So the first acquisition I have is um, from Twill and Pine. So from Twill and Pine, she had like a, her shop reopened and she has these really cool stitch counters. So on the side, there's dials like this to count um, and it's a pin. So you can pin it to any project bag. You could pin it to your whip if you wanted. I'm not doing that though. I'm pinning it to a project bag. And then you just have on the side of your project bag, a stitch counter, which, or a row counter, which I find incredibly helpful. I used it for um, the cable knit, Phoebe top I just did and it was really helpful to keep track of the cables and just have something nearby on my project bag that I could quickly turn and it doesn't like move around too much because there's like on the side here this metal on the side goes out almost as far as the dial so it doesn't get knocked around and turned like some of those stitch counters do so I really like it for that reason and it's so cute with the little bee and the peonies I love it. Um, so I got that and in the same order I so I got this little stitch marker from her. I just can't turn down a cute stitch marker. So it's a radish and it's a ball of yarn and it's a stitch marker. Very cute. I love it. So I highly recommend Twill and Pine Store. Um, it shipped really quickly too. So, um, it's great. I don't know if it's still open, but I've enjoyed that. Um, I also got more <laughs> of these flower stitch markers from All Stitch Studio. They're just called flower stitch markers. Um, but the brand's All Stitch Studio and some of these of the blue ones I had before and the rings did not come with the or my order. I just had these rings to put them on and I, these stitch markers are just, they're my favorite for raglans, like anything where the stitch marker needs to be on the needle. These guys are my favorite because they, like you could get just plastic rings. I've had some plastic rings but I love these because there's no seam there's nothing that yarn could get caught on because they're fully powder coated and they're aluminum underneath or some sort of metal so they're sturdy I'm not worried about them breaking they don't have any little things that could snag like some of my plastic stitch markers have little seams that sometimes like a really fuzzy yarn or a really um loose yarn can get snagged on but these don't have that they don't stick out very far so if you have a lot of stitch markers close together they're not going to get tangled up which i've had happen before and so i just i bought more of them because i wanted to um they are a great stitch marker and yeah i'm happy to have more they're also really fun on the like on this it's really fun i don't know if you can hear very satisfying just to have them on a little ring all together and they move around so very random but I'm excited to have more of these they just are really useful in my in my crafting um, so those are the main things and then yesterday I went 
to Fancy Tiger Crafts. Here, I'll actually start with this acquisition. Fancy Tiger Crafts, it's a Denver crafting store. They have a lot of sewing stuff, but they have a lot of yarn too. Um, so they're a great store, knitting, crochet, everything. Very wonderful. Um, they moved recently and I wanted to check out their new location. So that I did and I got this little pouch while I was there. It's, you know, just a pouch. I don't know what I'll keep in it yet. Um, it's probably too small to be a project bag, but um, it was just too cute to pass up with the skein of yarn and like everything on there. It was too cute. So I got that and I wanted to be able to rep more of my local yarn stores. So got that. They do have a great online shop if you are ever interested. And I think they also right now have a GoFundMe because they recently moved. Um, so they are looking to kind of offset some of the, those costs. If you want to donate or buy something from them, um, highly recommend their shop. Uh, Fancy Tiger Crafts. Um, I'll have it linked, but it's great. Great store if you're ever in Denver um, or shop online. So that's the first thing I got while I was there. And I also got this, which is really exciting. So this is a dye kit. Um, it comes with 100 grams of DK weight cotton yarn, um, the dye that you need, and instructions. So it's a low water immersion yarn dye kit. I don't know <laughs> exactly what that means, but I'm going to find out. And I'm excited that I have a new jar, another skin of yarn, and an activity. And I went with one of my friends and she got one too. So we're going to do it together. Um, but here's the colorway that'll be, I don't, I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe if I hold it. Yeah. It's this nice purple. The colorway is called Rocky Mountain High, um, which I think it's fun. It's funny because the Salty Blonde Fiber, Fine Fibers collection I was talking about has a colorway called Rocky Mountain High, but it's not, it doesn't look like this purple. So I'm excited about the purple. I think it's going to be really fun. And yeah, my friend and I will do this together at some point soon. Um, but you know, it has everything you need, yarn. Hopefully this is what we dye it in. I think that's maybe why the jar is included. I will find out as I go on, but um, this was only $25 as well, which I felt like was a really good deal for, you know, what will be hand dyed yarn. It's both an activity and in the end hand dyed yarn. We'll see if it's high quality hand dyed yarn, but at least it's hand dyed. So, uh, that made me really happy that we found that. So those are my acquisitions um, and everything. I will briefly talk through my progress on my intentions, but to be honest, I haven't done a lot this month on them. So um, starting off, I have 10 intentions for the year. The first one around exploring new fibers, nothing to report this month. Um, I just worked on what I already have, which is fine. Um, bringing my stash down. I added this one skein of yarn to my stash, but otherwise didn't do anything. And this is also an activity, so it's not even in my stash yet. So next month it might be an acquisition stash wise, but for now, now nah, that's just something to die. So I feel good about that. Um, knitting from the patterns I already own. Yep, I didn't buy a pattern this month at all, actually. Uh, deepening my yarn knowledge, nothing to report, um, just, you know, excited to die soon. That'll deepen my yarn knowledge, but for the time being, nothing much. Um, expanding my knitting knowledge. Yes, I'm doing a new stitch right now. I'm doing the puff rib stitch on a sample knit. The sample knit I can't show you, but um, it's really fun. So I'm enjoying that and enjoying just adding new stitches where I can to my repertoire. Making more socks. Talk about this. I'm trying to catch up with my 12 and 12, but. Um, I am really enjoying making the new socks and wearing them as well. Um, wearing my knits more often, it's too hot. It's just too hot right now. Um, it's been in the 90s Fahrenheit. I think that's maybe the 30s or 40s Celsius, but it's, it's just been too hot. Um, it's sunny, the air quality is horrible. I'm not wearing knits right now. Um, I've worn one tank top I have, my camisole um, number four a few times, but otherwise it's too dang hot. I am wearing this inside right now. This is one of my knits obviously, but this is not going outside of the house. I'm filming this video and then taking it off. So it is what it is. Um, my knitting less goal. Yeah, it's been okay. I mean, I've had a lot to do this month with getting ready to move and seeing friends and all that. So I've definitely knit a little bit less. Um, I've had a lot of sample knits with deadlines, which gets into my next goal as well, of fewer deadlines. So I haven't been able to knit 
super less because I have to meet goals and deadlines and timelines, but um, I feel good about the level I'm knitting. My hands don't hurt. I'm doing other things as well, so that's good. Um, I do have three deadlines for sample knits between July and August. That's a little bit too many, I think, um, but hey, it's okay. I'm getting yarn or compensation out of them, um, which is nice while I'm spending all my money on moving. So it's fine. <laughs> um, and then my final goal of more community and less content, still trying to strike the balance between being on my phone too much and on social media too much and connecting with folks. Um, trying a lot to engage people here better. Um, so hopefully you feel that and um, trying to, you know, comment on the things I watch and comment on Instagram, enjoy Instagram. So working on it, I think this is an ever up and down flow. It's not going to be perfect, um, but working towards it. And then finally, sometimes I add a recommendation at the end for something non-knitting related, if it's something I watched while I was knitting or anything like that. And so I do have one. Um, it is the show School Spirits. It's on Netflix and Paramount+. Plus. It was really good. Um, it's eight episodes. It's just one season right now. They're currently filming the second season, and I kind of wish I knew that before I watched the first season because the first season does end on a cliffhanger, and I need to know more, and I have to wait until 2025 to know more. So that's slightly frustrating, um, but it's a really good show. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was super engaging. I might honestly, like the ending's a cliffhanger, and I might go back and see if I can kind of pick up on any clues or Easter eggs towards the ending um, and just rewatch the show almost immediately. Like it was that good where I'm like, oh, I can start it again. It's entertaining enough. So highly recommend checking it out. Um, the premise is that this girl, she dies at school and she comes back as a ghost in the school and she's stuck in the school and she doesn't know how she died and she's trying to figure out, She know, well, she knows she was murdered and she's trying to figure out what happened. Um, it's not like gory or scary. I don't do scary, gory stuff. It's um, really light on that at all. Like it's, it's just a sweet story. She's kind of unpacking her own life, all the people in it. Um, there's other ghosts at the school too that are kind of trying to help her move on or help her solve her murder, depending on the ghost. Um, and it's a really good show. So highly recommend. Um, but yeah, I think that's all for today. Um, I actually haven't eaten breakfast yet, so I'm going to go eat and move some more stuff into my new place. Um, I'm really excited to show off that new space, set up a new area, um, and yeah, I will see you again soon. Um, again, feel free to enter the giveaway, just comment, make sure you're subscribed, and yeah, I will see you all soon. Okay, bye!